It's not live, but it's lively. Welcome to the Evermore Studio and your host, hey, Ed Halsey. Hello and welcome to Vendor Spotlight, bringing you the very best in insurance technology. And I know it's been a while. I've been neglecting you. I haven't bought you any of that great insure tech content and I've probably left you thirsty. But the good news is I have a tall glass of water for you today. I mean, I don't actually know if he's tall. I've never met him in person. So let, let's ask Tom White, Jarrell, are you tall? Well, Ed, um, I am sitting on a booster seat right now, but uh, mentally I'm a giant. <laughs> I like the answer. If you could be any drink, what would that drink be, do you think? Wow, okay. Um, coffee, I think. Coffee. Never lets you down, does it, coffee? Safe answer. I like that. I hadn't even prepped him for that one, so that was a that was a splendid answer. It's my top liquid. Go to liquid. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, Tom, before we do anything, tell me a little bit about yourself and how you got into insurance. Uh, well, so my dad started Jarrell. He, he started it with 100 quid uh, when I was five, um, and I saw him start and run a small business, uh, a, a SME, he always corrects me, it's an SME business. So I saw him start and run an SME while I was growing up. Um, and he, had, he never had any investment, never had any debt, did it all through force of will and old fashioned graft. Uh, and then for, for young Tom White, it just, it, it looked, I mean, I'm sure it was monumentally stressful. So I, uh, I wanted to go and work at a big company, get a paycheck, go home and, and not worry about the existence of the company. Um, so I, I did that. I went to London, worked in an investment bank for 10 years, um, got to the point where I was running my own trading book uh, reasonably well. Um, but yeah, I was, I was thinking, I, I felt like I didn't have much left to prove there and um, some things were happening in the industry that sort of tarnished my enjoyment of it and, and my dad was pushing retirement age. Uh, and actually my wife suggested that, that we leave banking and um, join the family business. So, so we, we did that. and. Um, I had a few over a few years overlap with my dad, which was which was really nice, uh, and then ultimately managed to give him his retirement, which in some small way pays him back for all those years of graft. So yeah, so <laughs> here I am. What better gift than giving someone their retirement? If anyone's handing out those gifts, <laughs> I, I'm happy <laughs> yeah, to take yeah, it. Cool. I'll join the queue. <laughs> <laughs> I might be a little bit young for retirement. I might be a bit ambitious, but uh, we have, as always. Your five killer questions, followed by our quick fire round, which we're not remotely pretending is uh, randomly generated. We've we've discussed some of the questions that we might ask. I don't want to put anybody on the spot, but are, are you ready for those first five killer questions? Sure, yeah, yeah, let's go. I've got to try and remember what they are. I, I've, I've fallen out of practice of this with a few weeks off, but I, I think I've got the first one, which is, do tell me, what do you do and how does it help the insurance industry? Uh, okay, well, so um, our, our back office administration system for, for insurance brokers and, and the life side is, is a key part of our business still. Um, it's our schemes platform that's, that's really driving our sales. So that's our USP for, for brokers and MGAs. Um, following a few recent tenders, I've started referring it to it as a underwriting led platform. Um, so we build products with us uh, and then a lot of the key elements of it are then self-serve. So, so the rating which is the, the outcome of the, the risk, the premium, uh, the endorsements applied, the endorsement wording, the document templates, document wording, email templates, uh, reporting, access profiles, all of that is self-serve. Uh, and then key functionality you get out of the box is you get an extra net. So you're, you know, for your, your own agents or your subbrokers or brokers can log in and see their book. Uh, you get insurer hosted pricing, so IHP out of the box. Uh, renewal automation, um, event-driven messaging, um, really nice client portal, client hub, and um, then those MI dashboards for, for your brokers, as I as I mentioned. So yeah, so quite a comprehensive underwriting-led platform. And you mentioned a lot of features in there. Which is the one of which you're most proud? Uh, yeah, well, I was, I, I, when I prepped these questions, I was going to talk about the renewal automation, but actually I saw your post on LinkedIn um, with Emma Roloff. Mm recently talking about RPA uh, and you were talking about um, borderos in particular as a, as a use case and it reminds me how great our bordero functionality was. So I think we tick off all the issues you raised. Um, so about, I think it was two years ago, we, we took the plunge and moved it all front end. Before that, border reporting was from the back office uh, and I was, you know, I'd spend an afternoon specifying it, pass it to the developers, it'd go through a release cycle finally get to the broker, the insurer would have changed what they wanted in the border by that point, we'd have to go through it all again. So we moved all that front end. 
Uh, and then, so the, the layout builder is drag and drop. Um, really, really nice functionality. And, and I remember when I first tested it, I nearly cried. It was so good. <laughs> and uh, so, yeah, so, that, so that's a front end border builder. It's available from an API endpoint as well as being able to run any uh, third parties, claims handlers, insurers you give. Uh, logins to it can run that report themselves or pull it from 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 the uh, API. Mm -hmm. um, so, for example, we've got aggregators um, pulling a daily sales file using that API. Oh, and then one other really nice feature of it is you can export that border layout as a transactional message template. So, you can send it by JSON or XML, and again, that's available as an API endpoint. So, you can you can design your own transactional messages, save them, add them to the add them to the system. Um, yeah, so really, really nice bit of functionality, uh, ready for RPA. And now is and now is the point where I ask the viewers to uh, the the guests, sorry, to delve into their soul and be very honest with us about what's your biggest <laughs> weakness. <laughs> so, right, so this is why I say it's too perfect. That's the weakness. <laughs> right. I think um, so. Our back office uh, administration system doesn't have direct quoting for open market um, commercial lines. Um, but we do have the tech now, obviously, with our underwriting-led platform. Uh, we do have a good chunk of premium, uh, so it's quite an enticing proposition for insurers, and, and we're talking to a couple of good ones, so fingers crossed we can get that sorted out. And what you mentioned you're talking to a couple of insurers. What does your ideal customer look like? Um, someone with a pen, so a, a, bro a broker with DA, an MGA, an insurer. Um, ideally, where we're, we're dealing with a decision maker at that company, so someone who's, who's fully engaged, uh, I, you know, I always say that the more you engage, um, the more you get. Um, so yeah, so so someone who embraces technology and wants to get things done, really. Perfect. And finally, in your five killer questions, what is your biggest success story thus far? Oh yeah, okay. So um, uh, we've got we early in my time at Jarrell, we we added uh, a, a big affinity to our book, um, and that wasn't even on my radar really. But it's it's been great. We've had a great working relationship. Um, you know, they, they trusted us to deliver what, what we told them we could, uh, and we have, so that, and that, that helps the working relationship. And um, they've really pushed pushed us, so the tech, they pushed our technology, uh, pushed us from, you know, from a professionalism point of view, um, and, and, you know, he's going to ask for a discount after I say this, but um, we wouldn't <laughs> be where we are now without, without that engagement, without that uh, contact. You always got to be careful what you say with an answer like that, right? Exactly. Yeah, yeah wanna... exactly. Yeah. It's been yeah. a lot of work. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of work. Really you need to do the garage thing when you just go, ooh. Yeah. Ooh, ooh, yeah. The next scheme's going to cost you. Yeah. Ooh, every, every, every quote. <laughs> yeah. You just suck in some air before it. So thank you very much for your five killer questions. Very good answers. No worries. Great. That's the stressful Great. bit Great. over. Now we're just going to ask you completely pointless questions about you, the individual. That help us find out a little bit That's about the Tom White. Bit, right? That's the special yeah. bit. That's the bit that everyone tunes in for. I'm convinced they skip through the first bit. <laughs> they just—they yeah. really want to know important things like, you know, would you rather have feet like hands or hands like feet? You know, the really hard-hitting journalism that we're famous for here at Evermore Digital. Gosh, I'm glad I vetoed that one. <laughs> that's not that's not your first question, uh, but but maybe we'll tackle that another day. But um, my my first question for you would be: if you could have any superpower, what would it be? Wow. Um, do you know, uh, we didn't discuss this one, but I'll say what popped into my head was flying. No, I have flying. Flying would be amazing. Or stopping time. I always wanted to be able to stop time. Let's, let's say going into slow time. I'd love that. Especially now I've got kids. I'd love to have a little kip. Just go into slow time for a bit, pull over into a lay-by. <laughs> have a snooze for an hour. <laughs> you just you just like to be able to sleep, essentially. Just some yeah, peace yeah, and exactly. quiet, really, is all you're Yeah, answer. my superpower would be no one would bother me for a bit. How about that? Oh, I'd love that. That would be my mm. favourite superpower. Although that's probably how people feel about me on their LinkedIn timeline. They wish they could just snooze me off. But um, question number two is, uh, what is your favourite, or who is, sorry, your favourite actor? Uh, Brad Pitt, I think. What's yeah, your favourite I've, I've favorite film? Movies. Pardon me? Favourite film with Brad Pitt in? Um, uh, I think, well, he's not a big part in it, but... Um, True Romance, mm -hmm. one of the best films ever made, I think. He's a he's the stoner on the sofa in True Romance. It's a great film if you've never watched it. I haven't, do you know, I haven't ever seen it. And I well, consider myself it, yeah. a bit I mean, of a cinephile. I, yeah, no, it's, it's, a, it's a good one. 
need to watch it. Right, excellent. That gives me something to watch this weekend. But in the meantime, question number three, uh, what is the sound or what would be the soundtrack to your life? Uh, I think maybe Talking Heads, Once in a Lifetime, that song, we'll have that one. Can you give how us a burst of it? Here? You know, that's the one that goes, how did I get here? Who is this? You know, who is this? Is this my beautiful wife? Is this my, is this my home? How did I get here? Notice, oh. notice how I there just really subtly tried to turn this into carpool karaoke as if the James Corden <laughs> well, I'm, comparisons I'm, uh, aren't, uh, aren't right enough. I think, yeah, that if, if you were asking about my weakest point, singing would probably be pretty near the top of the list. <laughs> I think it would be with most people. That's the point of karaoke, though, right? There's nothing worse, yeah. I think, than when you go to karaoke and the person up on stage can actually sing. It, it feels a bit tragic. I want to hear yeah. four drunk blokes up there <laughs> just absolutely butchering yeah. Bohemian Rhapsody. That's the point. Sp spoken word karaoke is my vibe, yeah. Spoken word <laughs> karaoke, I like it. Um, so so may maybe you'll be able to tell us something here on, on question four, but what's a little-known fact about you? Ah, uh, um... In my early 20s, I moonlighted as a professional bongo player. You weren't expecting that, were you? Actually? <laughs> yeah. You were a professional yeah. bongo player? Well, I was, I was paid to do it. How about that? I mean, that, that, was, that, that sort of lowers the level of professionalism a little bit. Were you on top of the pops? or uh, in, in nightclubs, yeah. So in, in Pasha and um, Manumission and other nightclubs like that, on a podium. I feel like we could make an entire episode, but that sounds like there's <laughs> lots of stories that I need to hear. Yeah. Um, and I thought, I thought, this is too boring. I need to get into insurance software. Exactly. What's more exciting than insurance? I'll let there that sit go. for a moment. Uh, question number five, the old favourite. InsureTech with or without an E? Without, without. I'm a proud member of InsureTech UK, so yeah. Perfect. And, and... E. You mentioned InsureTech UK. Who are your favourite other InsureTech? Uh, Warrior and Peace. I love Warrior and Peace. I love, I've connected with James York through watching your Vendor Spotlight. Um, got a bit of a bromance going on with him at the moment. So, yes, yeah, so love, love what he's trying to do, trying to make things better. Yeah. Perfect. Now, I want your go-to takeaway order. So, I'm going full smithy on this one. I don't just want it's a Chinese. I want every item that gets ordered. Uh, pizza. So I think, I'm sorry, that's a one word answer for you there, but um, pizza and I love uh, with sausage, mushroom, onion, and uh, if, if, they, if, we, if we're being fancy, I'll have a bit of basil on it as well. Where's, where, where do you tend to get your pizza from? Uh, well, I, I haven't had that one yet, but there's a, there's a, uh, there's a restaurant here um, in Bristol. I forgot what it's called now. There you go. That's my, I missed my chance to get sponsored by them. I'd, I'd, I'd um, probably have to pay someone or something if I if I did that. So you're probably doing me a favour. Yeah, anyway, they, they, do, they do a available. banging pizza. I can, get, I can get mushroom and sausage from them, and it's a banging pizza. So, yeah, that would be, that would be my choice. What's, what's your view on pineapple on pizza? Oh, there you go. Dirty secret. I, I do love a Hawaiian. Now, if you get a nice, cheap, nasty Hawaiian, for, if, if everyone's out and it's just me at home... I'll get a Hawaiian from the supermarket. <laughs> that, is a, that is an absolutely brilliant visual, just you hiding behind the oven door, just shoveling a, a, a pineapple yeah, pizza. Yeah. Eating it while it's still too hot to actually eat. <laughs> <laughs> I, love, I love that visual. That is a brilliant visual. But uh, we're going to go into words now. What is your favourite word in the English language? Mm, nimbus, I think. We'll go for nimbus. Nimbus? It's, it's, yeah. It's, uh, it's difficult to maintain the perfect nimbus. A nimbus, yeah. is, a, is a nimbus a cloud? Well, I think it is a type of cloud, but I mean in like a, a, a state of being, an aura, a, 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 a maybe like the two-point stage, let's call it that. The two-point <laughs> stage. That was yeah, a... that is an idea. That's an ideal nimbus for me. Yeah, the two-point stage was, was a stage that my friends used to massively manipulate because they knew that if I reached, if the second point hit the table for me, we were going out that night and we were staying out all, all night. It was all on. It was all on after yeah, they yeah. got I was that going, second one down. I was going out out, as, as right. they say. Um, question number nine. If you could be anybody for a day, who would it be? Uh, it's a little bit outrageous, but I think I'll be Keith Richards in his prime. I think uh, it'd probably have to be with a month's sabbatical or something afterwards. But yeah, I'll, I'll go for that for a day. You might not remember any of that day, but you have <laughs> a hell of a day. 
It'd um, be a good time, wouldn't it? You need to hire. Yeah. You'd need to hire someone to come around and video you having that day, so you could remember. Oh, any of mate, them. I don't think so. I don't think I want that video existing. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's very, very true. I was just trying to get some extra work for Evermore. There, I was thinking I could, I okay. could bring the camera along and, and watch along. And also, it sounds a lot of fun. Um, yeah. But talking of fun. Question number 10, your final in the quick fire. If you could have any three people to a dinner party, living or dead, who would it be? Okay. Um, well, uh, well, how about Bobby Moore um, and uh, Hunter S. Thompson, and um, we'll have Einstein as well, just to mix things up. So uh, sit in the middle of those three and uh, <laughs> see how we get on. That sounds like a lot of fun. I just, Bobby Moore's not an answer we've had before, but uh, one I'm surprised we've well, not had. Yeah, I, I saw, I was watching one of your videos, and I saw you, you asked someone who their favourite sportsman of all time was, mm. and, and I thought that was so. Like, so he was in my head when you asked this dinner party question. I thought, him. yeah, he's quite, quite a sort of old-fashioned role model, really, isn't he? Yeah, which is, which is nice sometimes. Well, thank you very much. This has flown no by. Problem. It's, 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 like they, it's like they say, it's like getting back on a bike, just coming in and recording. It's a lot of fun. I enjoy doing it. But hopefully you at home have enjoyed watching it and it's been entertaining for you. If it has, then please do smash that like button down below. If you could even add a comment on there, that would massively help us to make sure as many people as possible see this. Please subscribe to the YouTube channel and all the other tropes that are said by YouTube aficionados out there, of which I'm, I'm, I think I'm selling out to become one a little bit, I have to admit. But in the meantime, please do share with your boss, share with your gran, share to that person who blind connects with you on LinkedIn and then immediately asks you to follow their company. And their content's rubbish. I got a bit angry about that this week on LinkedIn, so check out that post as well. But thank you for watching. In the meantime, it is goodbye from Tom at Jarrell. And it is goodbye from me. We will see you on the next one. Well, you're a glutton for punishment staying all the way to the end, but I really appreciate it. Now, if you want more content like this, please make sure to subscribe over here, somewhere. Am I anywhere near it? Not sure. Or watch one of the extra videos up here. Peace. Free. Gangster, yep. I'll be on that uh, TikTok soon. Definitely.